Hello and welcome to another episode of Four Times A Podcast. You join us on Sunday the 15th of August. It's about half eight as we recalled and it's just a few hours since Celtic progressed in the League Cup round of 16 after beating Hearts 3-2 at Celtic Park. This was a bit of revenge for the opening day of the season, you could say. Odds on Edward opened the score in after a fantastic pass from Kyogo and then James Forrest, respectively. They then went on to make it 2-0, with Stephen Welsh getting his first goal of the season. Looked pretty plain sailing at that point, but Hearts did get a goal back in the second half when Liam Boyce was brought down by Carol Starfelt for a penalty. That made it 2-1, it was a bit edgy, but Celtic then restored a two-goal lead with Kyogo scoring at Craig Gordon's near post and then it was pretty much just a case of seeing the game out Celtic did concede again in injury time which made the score line look a lot closer than perhaps it should have been but Tony I'll come to you I know you're still isolating over in Derry so you're watching on the telly today but what did you make here it was a very good first half maybe not so much in the second half but another very confident attacking performance from Angie's team I thought the first half was unbelievable I thought it was just an absolute pleasure to watch I don't think they gave Hearts a minute they couldn't put a pass together they were just playing the lines at every opportunity and I thought we could score four or five in the first half the first goal was absolutely fantastic the pass for Kyogo a Forrest top drawer and Forrest puts it in a plate for Edward and he gets his goal which I was, I was delighted for him he got, he got on the score sheet again I think that's two in his last three games and he seemed as delighted as the fans and then just coming up to half time we get the other goal with we, we Welsh again it's quick play I think with Kyogo and Edward Edward gets the assist and, and Welsh finishes it Edward had another really good chance they should have made it three but the first half after watching it I thought this could finish whatever we want Hart switched it at half time they brought Hallard and the player they brought on actually caused us a bit of problems I thought Starfelt was really clumsy I think he's had a bit of a poor start to his Celtic career if for, for being honest he's had a few kind of silly mistakes and that was another one it's a stonewall penalty boy scores and then after that I think Starfelt gave the ball away he's obviously his confidence had been dented a bit but we settled and again a great ball by Tom Rogic, I thought was absolutely outstanding. To Kyogo, another good finish. I think I don't think Gordon covers himself in glory, to be honest. It's his front post and he's I think it was his poor kicking that led to us getting the ball in the first place. So aye, that was one for other people want want us to bring him back. But no, I was I was happy overall. I mean, I can't believe the game finished three two. The attack for me, I think we can take goals off any team. I've got absolutely no doubt about it. But in the other kind of the flip side, I suppose, is I think many teams will take goals off us because the defence isn't good enough. I thought Ralston had a good game. I thought Taylor was okay. I thought that I mean the worst of the back four or back five, if you include Hart, would have been Starfield and he's clever bro brought in to shore it up. I think we still need another centre half. I think we still need a right back and a left back. Now this time last week Postacoglu says I'm expecting two or three then the next week. We're a week down the line and nobody's come in. I think he's getting let down really badly by the board and it's frustrating and it's it just seems so silly and so negligent because Postacoglu's proven he's got a very good philosophy regarding football. He's shown that the players are buying into it. They're this, is, this team you're seeing the new is nothing like Lennon's team last year. It's full of energy, it's full of pressing, it's cohesive, it's no this lacklustre, clueless, unhappy football. It's fun, it's exciting, the fans are well behind it, the players are behind it. So why the fuck are we not signing the players this guy wants? I mean, and I, I know people are always harp on it, it takes time. But we've known for ages these players need to come in. He must be getting frustrated and I do feel sorry for him. Because it, there's a part of me that think that the feel-good factor might go on Wednesday. Because as much as I think we can score into Alkma, they're going to be a step above what we've played so far. And they'll probably score into us. And I think that's when Cam Heads will be required if they don't get the result we're after on Wednesday. T- Cam Heads in terms of... Obviously, we should still stick behind the manager and his plan. But I think, obviously, any irritation or unhappiness should be aimed at the board who are severely letting the guy down. And I, I, I can't see why. There, there's no reason we shouldn't have a right-back in there or a left-back in another centre-half. There's absolutely no reason we shouldn't be speculating here to, to accumulate because 
the Europa League brings good money. I know the, the conference actually brings a decent amount. I don't think there's much of a difference. You still want to be in the Europa League because it's a better standard of competition. But no, I was, overall, I was happy with the attack. And I, I loved watching it. I thought it was brilliant. Kyogo, I mean, people say about, oh, guys need time to settle in. He's came to this country, had to isolate for 10 days, doesn't speak the language, and he's got five goals and five appearances. So he's he is the definition of hitting the ground running. He's been superb. Uh, he's he's a kind of player where you just can't wait to watch more of him. Rogic, he's chipped in with quite a few assists and he's he got a goal against the uh, was it Javelin eh? or Dundee he scored against I can't Dundee. Think. Dundee. He he looked like his old self the day he was the ball was just glued to his feet and again that shows you what a, a kind of competent manager can do. So ah, it's, it's early days for Ange, but it's incredible how much the way the team plays changed. And I think any Celtic fan you speak to is well behind the manager and. Enjoying watching it, but we've got a really critical couple of weeks coming up. I feel, and uh, you look at that team. I mean, how many are, are and signings the day? Hart, Starfelt, Kyogo. Anybody else that started? No, I don't think so. So he's still not got his full stamp on it. He's just obviously implementing his own methods. So I uh, defence still needs. I'm, I'm not saying anything that people don't already know, but defence desperately needs a bit of surgery. Yes, I definitely, Danny. I know. And sort of mentioned in his post match that well, he's sort of having to re- rely on the same core of players just because of how limited the squad is at the moment. What did you make of the day's game? I think Edward was the only change from Thursday night. He came in for Ryan Christie and had had a great first half, especially with his goal and his assist. But I, what did you make of Celtic's performance in general? I thought it was the most one sided 3 2 game I'd ever seen in my life. The last four Celtic games you've been watching Celtic, it seems to be him, you know how many Celtic want to score. I was so delighted. The first two goals really pleased me for a number of reasons. The first one was, we've scored some really good goals lately, but that type of breakaway, where it's kind of one, two touch, quick passing. And I know it was kind of a similar goal to goes last week, but his first goal, but the pass was just brilliant. And Forrest does really well to get the heat up and actually see Edward coming. And it's a lovely finish and, and an empty net. And it was good to see Edward score, because I was quite critical of him in the last episode, and Tony will testify to that. He's been kind of hoping Edward kind of turns it on and decides to stay and I was kind of on the fence about it obviously if Edward's got to be the player that we know he can be then obviously you want me to stay but he's been pushed for a while but today there was a wee bit of a spark there I thought he's and the thing that really frustrates me about Edwards is we all know how good he is and even against Michelin where he patently couldn't be asked every time he actually got the boss things happened so he's clearly still an important player for us if he's up for it and the day he looked up for it I thought he was really good the diving thing was, was pretty poor I was disappointed in him in that I think two seasons ago he would have just uh, swung the right fit at that and put the ball in the top corner but I was disappointed at that but it, as a performance it's, it's getting better and better I think there are because of the energy that the players give in and what they put in and the effort they do tend to switch off for five ten minutes in games and we seem to get punished jabbling out the other night and a couple of chances in like a short space of time but they do seem to finish well and I know we can see that goal in the 91st minute today but there was only really one team that looked like school and it was the hearts so I think you can just be pretty pleased Dan but you know, we're saying, Tony's already said it, but you're just saying the same thing. Give Jan what he wants. And, you know, apparently that Jan Kuto boy was up on Thursday night as the guest of the club. And, and it's three days later and he's still no sign for Celtic. How is he coming up to Celtic Park without any agreement, surely? If he's up, he's ready to sign it. It's bonkers. And if they're gambling on getting by Alkmaar before spending or having to wait till Edward, then it's just, it's criminal. It's... And it's an unnecessary gamble that we, because look at how quickly momentum changes in football. Like a week ago, or two weeks ago, sorry, we we did a space on Twitter, and it was just people, mainly me and you, darn drunk. But it was people saying how it's got to be a long season, and then you go, you fast forward like eleven days there to the Champions League. We've won a couple of games in a row, and fans are absolutely buzzing. And then we keep buying up. But if the board don't act accordingly and things go south, we go out of Europa League and we get beat at Ibrox, then we're back to square one again. So Celtic could be so fucking good under Postecoglou if they back him. He's, what he's done with the team that are there, like players last year, Rogic, Ralston, Taylor. Now I'm a fan of Taylor, as everybody knows, but his final ball is very, very poor. And you can get away with that at Kilmarnock when you're really only expected to get up and down the wing and help out. And, like, his job is to give the boy Jordan Jones and go out the way, and I think. His final ball is poor, but he's a great defender. 
and he could have stopped the cross for the penalty of the day for Hearts, but generally speaking, he's a very good defender. But we need help there. And so look at the difference Angie's made with all these players. You need to give him new ones. You know what I mean? Because he's it's you're only going to get a tune out of them for so long. And Rogic looks like a completely different player. It's it's an absolute joy watching Rogic at the minute. Flex like last season, Rogic looked he didn't look overweight. He looked slow. He looked rusty. He, you know hardly contributed. Any time he came on, it he kind of got in the way all the time. And the way he's knocking the ball about the new, it's just Brock McGregor was outstanding again the day as well. So the future could be so good. And the team's playing really well at the minute. And you all want to be positive. Because this is it, Dan. This is what we said in March. We need something to get behind. But we've got something that we're all behind. So it's, it could be so good. But it's it's up to the board. They, know, they, they need to back them. And it's so important because, as I keep saying, it could be so fucking good. I definitely. Like we spoke a few weeks ago after that. Mitchell and setting legs like, saying, oh, that's three games now, and we've no one. But then, as you speak of it, like, the signs were there, fans were happy with seeing how, how the team were playing, and now we're four wins in a row, and there is a lot of positivity around the club, and as you say, it's like, everybody thought, oh, we only were going to sell and get behind a guy like Eddie Howell, that, but all we needed was an actual football manager who has a philosophy, who sticks to his beliefs, who gives you a reason to believe in his team. And that's exactly what Angie's done. Like I, I mentioned on the last episode, you don't want to get too carried away because we've only won a few games and bigger tests are still to come this month, never mind the rest of the season. But the, the fact is the team has such an identity now. Like I thought the second goal was just, it sort of typified everything that this Angie team's about. The awareness of Kyogo and Edward to get out there and take that on the kick quickly. And then the Welsh had already been there. There's just such a tempo about them and... You see that all the time from how quickly Joe Hart gets the goal kicks gone from throw ins to free kicks and corners, like I say, like the, the team is just always on the move and like there's a lot of teams in the league that just won't be able to handle it. Like you'll just tire them out if you continue to play at that tempo. And you're right to mention, of course, it, it's not going to be able to be kept up for ninety minutes a game every game because you will have times when you just naturally dip because it is such a high intensity sort of system we're playing, but I just thought today we were fantastic and Starfelt, I still get time to give him a bit of mere benefit of the doubt because to be completely honest with you, there's not much behind him in terms of competition at the moment so I think you just need to hope it is a bit of rustiness because I know he has been caught doing the wrong side a few times but like he, the merits in the team you'd like to think he will just get better and you've got to hope for that but I mean... I think it's a good, I, I think you're completely right with Callum McGregor. I thought he was fantastic again the day. He's just he's so like he, he's been brilliant for Celtic in the past, but he's just absolutely grown in stature this season. I know he had a poor season by his own standards last season, but just taking on that captaincy seems to have revitalised him and getting instructions from Ange has obviously helped him as well. Tom Rogic as well, another person who, if you want to be completely honest, probably for two or three years, hasn't he? been at the top of his game that got him that five year deal that he got a good few years ago but he, he's just everything like uh, he, people will say oh it's, he's I just player and you knows him and that but it's, it's much more than that he's just such a top quality player I always speak about how if you have a Celtic player that's got the ball in a tight space who do you want it to and it's always Tom Rogic like the ball just seems to be attached to his feet at times and I thought I, I mentioned earlier I thought Forrest Pass for the first goal was brilliant but for me, that's my only sort of negative at the moment. Apart from defence, I feel like you get much more from a badder out in the right. And I know Ange says it was a slight injury that it was that way. So I'm just hoping he's back sooner rather than later. Like, I think Luke Forrest has already provided a few assisted goals this season. So he's obviously effective enough in it. But I just feel that going forward, like having a badder back out in the right is like where, where you're going to see the best in this team. One thing I just wanted to pick up on, I just, Tony, I know we spoke about it the other day as well, but it's a game that we've won, so you feel a bit freer to do it, but I thought John Beaton was fucking terrible the day I thought. Like, not even talking about the Edward Diver in, but I thought the amount of times he let hearts away with things and he was just missing blatant fouls on Celtic players was ridiculous. Like, Kyogo was decked off, off the ball about five, six times by hearts players before 
we go any sort of foul or like Hearts players getting spoke to about it, it was ridiculous. Like, would did you make a job beating the day? He's a fucking prick. He's useless. But he's been useless for years. And again, I always like to say it, no one for big conspiracies, but I remember when Rangers done it with Colum and they basically came out and said, we don't want this guy refereeing our games because he's, he's rubbish and they didn't get him for six months. What's the harm at Sunday at Celtic coming out and saying, look, this guy's fucking utterly ridiculously poor. Can we have six months without him refereeing our games? Because, I'll be honest, as you say, Kyogo got thrown to the deck a few times and then I think somebody worked it out. I think it was the linesman eventually seen it. But I, it's just a bad referee. I mean, it's, it's just really poor. I, I mean, I wouldn't be against the club coming out and saying, look, nothing personal. He's just a really, really poor standard and we would rather he, he didn't referee your games and, and that's it. So uh, I thought he was really poor. The, the refs usually are. But luckily for us, if we keep playing this style of football and improve our defence, the referees won't matter a fuck. So uh, I, 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 thought, I thought you would bring him up. I just I just think he's a really poor ref. I think the standard of refereeing in Scotland's embarrassing to be totally honest I'm sure Danny take it, you would agree that John Beaton is hopeless I thought he did a really poor game today I think I think Beaton always is poor games when he did Celtic but today I thought it was really bad as Dan said Kyogo was hit I think it was three or four times just in the first half and Hearts were Hearts had deliberately targeted him and it was actually the one that was probably least a foul that he booked the guy we actually gave a foul and booked Halkett for and he consisted in these decisions Edward's booking he got that spot on that was a dive but then he should have booked Ginelli at the start of the second half when he done the exact same thing. No consistency, one rule for them. But the time is, you need to call it when, when, when you're winning. But then people turn around and say, oh, quadruple treble, nine in a row, how can the refs be treating you? It's some sort of conspiracy and you keep winning. But, you know, fuck them. It's facts. And the way that we've been refed so far this season, like even last week when we won 6 nothing, like Dundee should have been down to about 8 men the way they carried on and teams certainly are going to be like, Kyogo's going to get targeted every week when he goes to Ibrox in two weeks he's going to get kicked off the park and we need a strong referee that will turn around and call it out and give fouls against teams for it but you know what it's like for us and it just taps back to when Hearts beat us and Madden had a really bad game we had a legitimately good goal that didn't stand and then Andy Harrow they get away with uh, an assault on Carl McGregor and people are coming out and saying let's just sort ourselves out first before we monitor and then it's the same people say about oh, winning why would we want to monitor us and that's how they get away with it because they perceive Celtic to be soft and I was disappointed again like nobody backed Kill go up. We had to take Harry do it himself to get any sort of retribution, and he has got plenty to dig about him. Kill go, which is which is good to see. But certainly, we need we either need to sign somebody that's just going to be walking a card every week to back him up, or the rest of the team need to grow a set and start defending their teammate on the park because the treatment he's got in the first few weeks has been shambolic. I, I definitely agree with that. I think it's just like nobody's calling a conspiracy here. It's just fucking terrible refereeing, and we just happen to see it happen to Celtic more than we do any other team. Andy, you've just joined us. We've went over but what we thought of the game. You were at the game as well. Okay, what was your thoughts on it? I think there's a lot of, again, just more positives to take for the game. Just obviously, what we've been going on about the last couple. Celtic like have been improving and going forward. We look a massive threat. We will score a lot of goals, but it's it's unfortunate that we're conceding. I think one of you posted the possession stats. I don't know if you've already spoke about it. It was it was fucking silly. And Hank Hart's had like two attempts and scored them both. And it's it's something that is, we know we need defenders. We know we need signings, and it should really should be highlighting them. The board members should have been sat there watching that game, saying that we need this sorted. We need this sorted now. Particularly with a massive massive game coming up. But the game itself, I thought something that I wanted to, to pick up on was Greg Taylor. And I've been hammering that boy for weeks, to be fair. But see, the last couple of games, he's massively, massively impressed me with, with the way he's applied himself and the way he's been deployed in that team by Ange. And I think that it's testament to just how good a manager he is and, and sort of what he's doing and what he's building. That a guy like Greg Taylor is, who is now looking like, a, looking like a football player to say, like the way he sort of moves into the middle of the park, he's, he's doing it really well. But Kyogo, he's a, he's a spot on. The, it's going, to, it's going to happen multiple times this season where teams target him and teams boot him. And it, it's good to see that he's, he's no shying away from that and it's no putting him in the issue that won't. Cause I mean, that, that's not going to dampen his game. If anything, it looked to motivate him. And when he was obviously cheering on with the crowd and stuff like that, which is, I was just buzzing. I just love watching a guy play. He's, just, he's infectious. Just, you, you buzz off him. And I think that we will many times this season. He's, he's, he's going to score a lot of big goals for us, that boy. 
he's fucking just an absolute diamond air player. But I don't know what was it. I, I really enjoyed the first half. I, I just really enjoyed watching Angie's teams play football. To be fair, Tom Rogic looks to be the Tom Rogic of old, which is something that I, I was skeptical we would see again because for the longest time he was struggling with fitness and he had a, he had a lot of problems. And like I say, it was something we didn't know we would see again if, if Rogic could get back to that. And he really does look to have the the dancing feet again. He's I mean, his, his coach controls fucking through the roof. It's, it's scary at times. And the way he can just sort of manoeuvre himself for being such a big guy, I know it's it's one of the things like we have him in your team. You know, you've he's he's always got that in him just to unlock a defence or else just to shim it to the side and pat one the tap in. So I, I do think he's going to be a massive player for us. Just I'm buzzing to see Ange just getting a tune at so many players and getting so many big performances. It's I just don't understand how anybody can be watching this with the power to, to make the improvements and, and give them and the players that he wants and they're, they're taking their time out. Like go and get it done. Like give this guy's the tool the tools. Like, it's it's I don't know, it's, it's just I'm not really looking forward to to sort of mere games, mere games under hand, watching us play football and hopefully hopefully we we would be AZ and then it's it's European football it's on the horizon for us again and I, I do I'm, I'm looking forward to see what Angel will do in, in European competition because I think a lot of the games will I it's, like I say it's kamikaze football at times I think but the the way we'll play and the way he'll want us to play will, will really suit for, for teams in Europe of an outmatched standard that I on paper probably you would you would fancy him be favourites given how bad our fucking backline is right now. But I think he's gonna fancy it because he knows the game will be made open. It's not gonna be that sort of harsh football with our ten men behind the ball and just put you off the park. I am looking forward to seeing to seeing that team with a good few more games under about playing in Europe. So I was was buzzing with the game today. Unfortunate we're conceding goals still when hope I just I just need to hope and pray probably yourselves that that gets sorted because the, the backline's just not good enough and as there should, there's a lot more to come for this team this season. I think, I think there's so much, so much promise in it. I definitely, Danny. I'll come to you. The obviously the draw for the quarterfinals was made in Celtic. Well, the first name out the hat, and they're drawn at home to Championship side Rafe Rovers. It would have been disrespectful to Rafe Rovers. It's a great opportunity for Ange to take Celtic to Hamden for his first time under his managerial tenure. Aye, it's a good draw. It's League Cup, no often the most cherished trophy at the start of the season, but it's the first one you can win and if you've got a new manager in, it's going to be his first chance to win silverware. So, and it's kind of the same with Rogers first season, you know, we got Alloa at home in the quarter final. So it's just you know, no it's not easy because, you know, the Rafe they beat Aberdeen the day and Aberdeen have started the season well, so it'll be a tough game, they'll get the proper respect that they deserve. But I it's, it's a good draw to get into the semi final, closer to winning a trophy and I is you know, it's as good a draw as we could have got and not that you'd want to look beyond the quarters, but you get that wee thing that it beat Rafe at home, which should be doable, considering how we've been playing at home recently. And then you think, right, big Angie's at Hamden. Hopefully, by that time, it's early October, early November, team will be, you know, more players will be brought in, hopefully, we say God willing. And the team will be flying by that point. Again, God willing, you get a national semi-final, first chance of a trophy, so... It's it's a good draw in the sense that it doesn't need to go to Hibs or, or Ibrox or like Tannadice or something during the week. It's it's a good draw at home against Rafe and you you when you get a semi final, but darn you you fancied getting somebody else, did you know? I I think I just got a bit carried away at the game and just thought I wanted Rangers as much as, as I could at that time, just because I, I think from watching them the last few weeks they're fragile and I think that I know I've got them obviously on the twenty nine for Eddie, but I just feel like I just always want to be the one that ends their season. So ending their participation in every competition is the way I want it. And look, I know they got a home draw against Livingston, so it's quite likely that they'll they'll get through that if they if it's in like the first day of the season against Livingston. But I it's I think it's a great opportunity. I mentioned that last week as well. It was great for guys like Dyla and Rogers, obviously, as you say, like to get the League Cup just gives you that sort of I don't think Ange really needs any more favour with the fans at the moment, but it just gives you that bit of like actual success. Uh, so it's like you can actually see that what you're working towards is bringing rewards like cups and Luke Celtic as much as Ange as well. Like, like he will have to deliver trophies or else it won't matter a fuck. Tony, you were the opposite for me. You were happy with Rafe Rovers at home, just as simple a tie as we, you could have hoped for from that draw. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's another home tie. It's another chance for the club to fleece us and get more money that they won't reinvest. But no, I think for, for me, 
at, at this stage, this team's still got a long way to go. I don't know when the next round is. I'm assuming it's in September, but no, I'm happy with Heath Rovers. It's a game we should be winning really comfortably. We might get a, a chance to kind of rotate the squad, which will probably be required because we're playing kind of really energetic, fast-paced football than now. So uh, I was happy with the draw, and it should really present a chance for for Ange to get to Hamden and, and we'll see how that goes. Um, I think we've already spoken about the fact that the, the first trophy of the season is it's very important. We, we won it four years in a row and then we, we lost it last season. We boot a fight and a kind of pathetic attempt. So I think I think we've got to have a it to try and win that, that trophy and then build upon it. But that's obviously a long way away. We can part the League Cup for now and, it, and it's all eyes on Wednesday. And I think that promises to be a really hard task. But one that, the, that we should be looking forward to, we'll learn to it regardless what happens. And I think it's another opportunity to build momentum if we go against AZ and get a really positive result. That the fans become even more behind Ange and become even more enthusiastic and happy and determined. If you don't get the result you want, it goes back to sight the board, which would be fair enough. So I, I, I'm looking forward to Wednesday, but I've also got, I'm a wee bit pessimistic, if I'm being honest. I don't know about you, three, but I have got worries about the defending aspect. Look, I think it's going to be a tough game. We'll, we'll, we'll just come on it now. It's the team that finished third in the Erdovisi last season and I, I don't know, it's, a, it's a sort of, Danny, I'll come to you first on it. It's, it. On paper, it looks a tough tie, right? And I'm not going to come out and say, oh, look, I fully expect Celtic to win. It's obviously going to be a tricky tie. But if you look at AZ Altmar there, no, without their troubles, they've sold quite a few players. And I believe their captain's sort of trying to force a move and might not play as well. And then they started the league campaign yesterday to a shock defeat. They lost 1-0, so... No, everything's rosy in Alkmaar at the moment, and I think we are having a bit more competitive football played, and that should benefit us, you'd think, and a full capacity Celtic Park as well should benefit us, and I know there's no away goals or anything to worry about on Wednesday, but I, I think we should we should be looking to take possibly like a, a two-goal lead over there if we can, I think that would set us up quite nicely. Fuck's sake, you're talking about you Tony thinking pessimistic the defence and you're talking about two goal leads. I, I'm kinda in the middle with, with you two. I, we are we should be sharper than Alkmaar, but then at the same time we've played so many games in a short space of time, we might actually go the opposite way. Alkmaar have only played the one competitive game and they did lose it. We've had the problems of Sel Boadu, who left, I think he went to Monaco. Coop Miners is trying to force a move, so they don't come in it without their trouble, but you you would just suspect that if, like Tony said, if we are slack at the back, we'll be good enough to punish it. I said a couple of weeks ago, I think this tie will come too soon for us. I still think that. I'm a wee bit more optimistic on it than I was last week, but I don't know. I mean, it's I think it's important that, it's important that the fans don't, throw the toys out of pram if we don't win it. Uh, or we get beaten first day. It's, we know what we need. We know we need defenders. We know we need signings. But it, you need to stick with, with and you know. But it will be tough. I think Celtic will win in first day. But I think they'll win narrowly. And it leaves a tie in the back. Danny, just make, make sure and tune in on Wednesday because that's when the game is. Sorry, I've got a ticket. Sorry, ju- just to ask, say, so you don't miss it. I'm going as well, so I don't know. I'll turn up on Thursday. I think it's back to COVID times and they fans. No, I think they'll win on Wednesday, but it will be narrow and it will go there and then you're kind of it's in the hands of God over there with, with their crowd because we I don't think we'll get in a way support but it'll be tough but it's it's a good test it'll probably be a good test but then just as I've said they'll if we if we are slack they'll punish us if there, if there's any feeling in amongst the Celtic team that I don't fancy it, then we could punish them as well the way we are playing and hopefully we'll get Christy back hopefully Abad will be back and we can have a right good go at them. But it'll be kamikaze, as it has been so far under Ange, so we'll not be very faint-hearted. But looking forward to it. I'm just looking forward to the next Celtic game at this current moment. It seems to be going so well that I keep saying, right, when's the next game, when's the next game? So it is Wednesday, and I think we'll probably sneak it, but it could be could be a classic. Andy, I'll come to you. It's European opposition, obviously. 
no disrespect to Jablonek, but it's quite a step up from them. And obviously Dundee and Hearts are two promoted teams. So yet again, it's going to be a massive step up from the opposition. We've been getting these wins against. How do you see Thursday? Eh, so it's the Danny Scott League on Thursday now as well. How do you see Wednesday going? I think, as I said, it's, it's going to be a really difficult tie. Realistically, they're going to be one of the... They're a level above sort of the opposition that we've faced in Jablonek and sort of Hearts and, and Dundee recently. So a difficult game, I think. Listen, I've, I've got no doubts in my mind we can score goals. And as has been mentioned a million times, the, the worry is at, at, at the back. That, that's the thing. So we're going to need to see just how we can create a clean sheet. If, if we do that, then you, you, you really do fancy to score goals. I think, I, I, I think we're going to concede. I don't, I don't really see... Anyway, we don't. We're no, we're no good enough back at the minute. But I, I actually do think we're going to win the game. Particularly, I've, some, something's been telling me 3 1 all week. And then the day just sort of convinced me of that, to be honest with you. I'm convinced. I am convinced that, I'm convinced that we win the game at home. I, I, I do think we're, with the crowd being in, and I think that'll play a factor for us, particularly. And it, it'll probably push us on to, to get the goals that we need. Taking a 3 1 out there, you would. I don't know, do you ever really fancy Celtic like, doing anything away from home, no matter what the lead is? I think that we've just got to sort of see where we're at. It's, signings should have been made and they should have been in a different position than we are the now, but we're not, so we've just got to carry on and take it as it is. But I, I, I fancy it at home. Um, God knows about the away tie, basically, but I, I do fancy it to win the home game. I, I don't know, it's sort of weird with the way this team plays. Like, I don't even know if the home tie is. Is like, that much more importance? Because I think we sort of set up to play the same way away from home. Tony, how do you actually see the game going? I know you gave us a bit of a preview, but you've been the most vocal about signings not being in the on this episode. But do you think that will ultimately cost us on Wednesday? Or do you think we will have enough to get a at least take a lead over to Holland on the following week? I mean, don't get me wrong. If, if we take our chances, I mean... I fully expect us to score a couple. I just expect us to concede a few as well. I think we'll draw two each or potentially even three each. I think the one thing that will be I can expect on Wednesday will be goals. It's just the way the system is now, and I just don't think we'll get the right players for it for it to work. But I could be wrong. We could get lucky. They could miss their chances. We could take ours and we could take a 3 0 lead there, there. But that's just these ties are never that simple. I think it'll probably be, again, it'll be a good test. But it's really, well, I heard Christie's a, a kind of doubt, a battle will be in contention. So I'd be looking at playing Edward, Kyogo, Abada. Then I would play the uh, Rogic, Turnbull, and McGregor again. And then the, the same defence with Hart. So. There's goals all over the team. I mean, you've got the, the top six would have goals in them. Or the forward six, the midfield and the attack. So I think we'll need to score a lot of goals. And I, I just think we'll concede goals as well. I still think we're a wee bit sloppy at times. Like even the, the, the javelin egg with heart kind of double save. One of them, I think, they lose three headers in a row. I mean, you just can't do that at this level. It's, it's, it's It'll get punished. And I don't want to sound too negative. Because I think, I mean, for, for all I know, we could sign a right back tomorrow and he just gives Right in, but I, I just I think we've left it too late, and it's just history repeating itself, and it's, it's infuriating because I feel as though we're gambling the Europa League the same way we gambled the Champions League, whereby if we'd have got the players in in time, we would have beat Midland easily, and we could maybe have gave PSG a game. Don't get me wrong, I think they would have beat us over the two legs because you look at as noon and we're starting to put a bit of a team together. I just I don't know. I find it just so baffling the fact that this board and they jump through hoops to get Posta Coglu exactly the. Play as he wants in time for the games that he, he needs to win it's just fucking so stupid so I think we can win but in the same token I think no result would surprise me apart from now now so I'm looking forward to the game I'll, I'll be I'll be travelling back during it I'll be in the boat I think just as the game's ending so I'll, show, I'll still be watching on my phone and I'll be praying for a positive result uh, hopefully we'll be speaking to you on the high seas after a high watching Celtic oh, I think that might bring us to an end tonight but I'll just say Tony I know you sort of gave us a few there what, what is your final prediction I know you've said the result would surprise you but he's a score prediction two each Andy what are you going for I said I'll go for 3-1 Kai will go in the score sheet again and Danny what have you went for I think it'll be 2-1 I think uh, Kai will go score and a bad will score but we'll give away a right daft silly goal later on I'm going to stick to my convictions and say that Celtic will take a two goal lead over Holland but I, I think it'll be an absolute thriller and I think Celtic will win 4-2 I think uh, as a few years have said I think we will, we'll, if we go forward we'll definitely create chances if we take them we'll score quite a few but I don't know it's just if if, if Altmar are any sort of decent pedigree team then they probably will get a few against us and it 
it could be a tricky night, but I'm going to be optimistic and say Celtic will take a 4 2 win over to second leg and hopefully we'll be able to see that out. But no, that's us for this Sunday night. It's been another relatively positive episode. Hopefully, Celtic will make a few signings over the next few days to give us mere optimism going into Wednesday night. And aye, then we'll, we'll be back after Wednesday's game with hopefully another positive review of a, a good European Celtic night but I big thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring the podcast as always if you would like to help at the podcast go to manscaped.com and use the discount code trim for tims that's trim and a number four tim and that'll get you 20% off all products and free shipping so I that helps us out and Manscaped really is the industry leader for below the waist grooming so I thanks very much for anybody that's continuing to do that or has done it recently and I we will speak to you at some point during the week I'm sure thanks for listening cheers subscribe to YouTube four times in a podcast on YouTube please subscribe thank you I got my eyes on you and you post to go blue I want you have a love and emotion endlessly we can't get over you and you pass the car glue I want your heart, love and emotion Endlessly Cause you're a fiend yeah, And you know it Angie, You're better than Eddie Howe to me Angie, All the history you know it Angie, You're saying for as you Here we go One in a row Angie, here we go, one in a row.